Spoiler warning for Steven Universe, Season 4, Episodes 2 through 15. Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Steven Universe, Season 4, Episodes 2 through 15. In case the spoiler warning didn't give it away. And I'll let Ember go first since she seems to like to go in order. <laughs> Well, you were just jumping around a little bit on a certain binge watching that we did. <laughs> but the Steven Universe, because the episodes are so short, I think it's a little easier to go sequential. Also, they work well as standalone episodes. But we had some really heavy topics this season. Yes, we kind of went a little over last time because we actually covered the season four premiere in the last episode, so... Yeah, we didn't realize it was a season four premiere. I thought we were actually a couple episodes into season four, but after reading many websites, I realized, oh, that was the first episode of season four. Well, that's a good way to start a season. Yeah. So instead, you know, we got to have some discussion about fusions and the difficulties and dealing with um, things that one has done that may be regrettable and mindfulness, which was funny in a coincidental sort of way because Lux and I actually went to a mindfulness panel relatively recently. Mm -hmm. I actually watched that episode before the panel way back like a couple months before and then watching it again I realized oh mindfulness I get the title of the episode. Yeah and also very interesting in casting Blue Diamond as a somewhat sympathetic character. That after all this time, she's still in mourning. Mm-hmm. All this time is a, is a good point, because it's been several thousand years. Wow. Yes. But in the relatively immortal life of a gym, how long is that in a gym's relative time frame? I mean, it sounds like forever to us, because we have short human lifespans, but even Yellow Diamond makes it sound like it's been a really long time. And speaking of the lifespan thing there... It's kind of interesting how they still look down on humans. Because when Blue Diamond first encountered Greg, she goes, how can a human understand my emotions, basically? And she doesn't realize that humans have a greater understanding of emotions than she does. Because of our short lifespan, we experience everything harder and greater. With a little more immediacy, because we don't have the time to put things into a larger perspective most of the time. Yeah, we just don't have the time to build up the wisdom kind of makes you remember that old phrase how youth is wasted on the young oh yeah if i could go back and tell myself a few things oh my goodness mm -hmm. as usual they do a good job of hiding heavy adult topics that kids should learn and know about inside of the show like mindfulness and death and how choosing works <laughs> Yes, I know we kind of jumped towards the end because I was going through a run through of all of the amazingly diverse topics that were covered in this season so far. Because there's just so much and we're getting more world building, you know, that whole flashback with Buddy's journal. Mm -hmm. I like how they're like, wouldn't the gems look different? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and their imagination puts them all in historical costumes like, yes, the gems would have looked different, but not in that way. And they would have looked different because their appearance has evolved over time. Mm -hmm. If you compare what Garnet's first version of the fusion looked like when they first accidentally fused and then when they fused again on Earth and then ran into Rose and Pearl, compare that to what their fusion looks like when we're first introduced to them in the series. Mm-hmm. And then it changes later because of the damage they received and reformed. Yeah, so even though they repeatedly say that gems don't really change, over a long period of time we do see alterations not only in their mental state and understanding, but in their actual physical characteristics. Mm -hmm. Like how much Peridot has changed just in the short time she's been on Earth. She doesn't look like she's changed that much, but her hair has changed her attitude has changed she's much happier than she was when we first met her yes and she and lapis are getting along much better and on heavy adult topics for the season family oh my god family yeah i love the uncle except for when we first meet him because he was a bit of an ass 
Well, if you came back and found squatters on your property, how would you feel? Well, he was also very racist. Yes. And very, um, uh, it's not racist because he was also against hippies and... Narrow-minded. Yes, very narrow-minded. There's a better term. Yeah, he was very narrow-minded. And he changed over time. Also, we just put every big celebration. We're all getting married. Uh, sorry about your marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that that actually could be a good phrase. Sorry about your marriage. Mm -hmm. I love how they even had a tombstone. Also, how did they pay for all that? I'm not sure. I want to know. Also, apparently there was a grease fire somewhere. That Amethyst started and put out. out. Which is nice, taking responsibility for your actions. Mm -hmm. And not just the complicated family issues um, that we had in not just that one episode with Uncle Andy, but when we had him come back later and the whole thing with the flashback to when Stephen was a baby and the whole thing about going to Korea to find the palaquin. Mm -hmm. Cause that had a lot of complicated family stuff because the gems are his family, both Greg and Stephen, but also the element of change and working with accepting change is a recurring thing theme in the series because the gyms have trouble dealing with change because they think of themselves as unchanging mm -hmm. just because changes come over such a long period of time for them also i think there's more change if you're not on a homeworld controlled planet where everything is dictated and your place is set but andy himself points out that he had what he needed to stay in touch with his family the whole time he just didn't want to change he had that plane. He flew everywhere. He could have seen all of them, but he didn't want to change how the family met up. So if they weren't going to come to the barn, he wasn't going to go see them. Yeah, and speaking of three gems and a baby, you mentioned that episode on the bye. It got kind of dark there for a second when Pearl was reaching for Steven's gem. Just a little. And it literally got dark. The background actually went black just before she went, no. No, no, Rose wanted this. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because I'm pretty sure that would have killed Steven. Mm-hmm. You know, regardless of him being a human gem hybrid, just ripping out something that is part of the body in the abdominal region, yeah, that's that sounds pretty fatal. Mm -hmm. Though I love Garnet's theory that Steven was actually a fusion. If you notice, they all had their own theories based on their own point of view, like Garnet's fusion, her point of view, Pearl's, her point of view was like, that gem is her, because that's how gems work. She can't reform because it's surrounded by something else. So I'll just remove that something else. Yeah. To Pearl, it was like the equivalent of the gem being bubbled. It's like, well, if we can just get rid of the bubble, she can come back. And Amethyst was just, you know, because she's so new and still learning stuff. She just, mm, can't she just change shape? <laughs> yeah. She, she can shift, right? Because it's a gem. Uh, that's Rose, and Rose is a gem, and gems shift. Mm -hmm. But now that we kind of hit on the heavy topics, let's rewind a little bit. And the return of Sardonyx, and oh my goodness, fusions can have their own rooms. Which kind of makes sense because Garnet has her own room, and we know now that Garnet is a fusion. But wow, Sardonyx, way to steal the show. Mm -hmm, quite literally. And because of this, we learn that she actually is a fourth wall character. She can see outside of her own dimension. She knows the whole thing's a show, which is kind of interesting. And it makes sense because of Pearl and Sapphire, those two minds getting together, plus Ruby, it all kind of makes sense that they'd be able to see outside of their own world. But it's just, the fusion itself was so interesting that they brought Sardonyx in. Because Garnet, the huge grin and excitement when Steven and Amethyst showed off Smoky Quartz, and Pearl's absolute, no, 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 no. <laughs> No, 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 this is not happening. But when they get together as Sardonyx, they're equally thrilled. Mm hmm Well, I picked it up as Pearl being thrilled, too, and surprised that, how did this happen? <laughs> because they had trouble with it before, and then Steven fused with Connie, so they probably thought that he could only fuse with other humans. But still, Pearl's reaction compared to Garnet's was just awesome. Mm-hmm. Also, speaking of fourth wall breaks, going back to that book episode with Buddy's book... Like someone reading, look at the camera, and Buddy's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, oh. 
Yes, and apparently Rose had more lions originally. And also interesting that further back, the gems were in different physical locations. They didn't stay together all the time like we see the three modern gems do now. Please continue. <laughs> and the episode uh, with Buddy's, the first episode with Buddy's journal where we actually read it, is the only one where we see lion this time. Oh, yeah. And he was their transportation to the library. And goes back to what you said about Lion listening to Stefani and not to Stephen and Connie. Because Stephen parked him mm -hmm. and then he walked off. Yep. Also, Stephen's reaction to the library. That, that would be me if I'd never been in a library. It's full of your favorite things. Dun, dun, dun. Box! Shh! Box! <laughs> that would be me. That would totally be me. That would be your reaction walking into the Library of Alexandria. Yes, yes, pretty much. And I'd be going, dang it, I can't read Greek. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it would be in multiple languages because they had books from all over the world at that time. Yes, but I'm pretty sure English wasn't one of them. Mm. And not being multilingual is a distinct handicap right now. <laughs> Quite. Also, I'm seeing the little stool Stephen trips over and falls on and starts scooting around. It's like, I don't remember those from college. <laughs> I remember those too. I'm like, I wonder if many libraries still have those or if they've been removed as a hazard because they have wheels and can move and they can also be stationary. I think it's a very safe design, but... Yeah, especially since you can't really do what Stephen did, which is lay on top of it and push it around. Because once you put weight on it, it settles. Yeah, because it keeps the wheels from moving, which is why it's such an awesome design. Mm -hmm. Though I wouldn't mind doing what Steven did. Yeah, that would be fun. I used to do that with office chairs. Used to, he says. Well, I don't have room for it now. <laughs> <laughs> I only did it when I had room in large environments. But I don't go to any place that has office chairs in large environments anymore, so can't do it. I also don't have the room to do one of my favorite things in office chairs, which is sit down and spin! <laughs> Not to get dizzy, but I preferred seeing the world blur by. Whee! <laughs> Going back to Steven Universe now. Yes. An interesting bit with them taking the Ruby ship. They've been on the Ruby ship before and didn't have any of these distortion issues. And they were with the Rubies. So did the Rubies make the adjustments to allow them to be their normal sizes? Probably. Also, they weren't, I don't think they were using the gravity distortion drive at the time. No, but I don't think Pearl had start. Had they started with the gravity distortion drive when that happened? Are we talking about the actual episode or the episode with the rubies taking them in the ship? Actual episode. When no, did the, they engage the, that drive? Oh, they didn't engage the gravity drive until Steven did it. So everything up to Steven hitting the panel was um, with normal speed, mm -hmm. which is still pretty dang fast if you think about it. Yeah. But just, we don't know the exact distance they were away. No, we just have to assume that it was a pretty long distance. Mm hmm because it would take 70 human years. So if we consider them traveling at light speed before they hit the gravity drive, that's 70 light years? Yeah, that'd be 70 light years. But the question is, if they had issues with the gravity drive, I know that's a ruby ship as opposed to a diamonds vessel, which... That arm looked a lot like the one that Jasper and Peridot came on. Oh, they just came on a hand. They didn't come on an arm. Yeah, so diamonds get arms and high-ranking lieutenants get hands and rubies get those kind of squid ball things. Yeah, they kind of look like an eye drop. Upside down. Mm -hmm. But how more advanced is the technology in the diamonds arm ship? Because they brought Greg back and... It wasn't that much later that the Earth Crystal Gym team showed up and did the masquerade with bringing Steven. I don't think there's that much difference in the technology. Mm. The one thing I keep worrying about is relativistic speeds. When you're traveling at light speed, time around you really accelerates. Though they did point out that it bends reality. I'm just not quite sure what exactly that means. Because they did manage to make it to Greg and he wasn't that much older. And it sounds like the time from when they left Earth to get there was only a day for Greg. So that means there's not much relativistic problems? 
because time would be a whole lot further on Earth by the time they got back if they had that issue. And it doesn't seem to have passed in that manner. Because it's only been a day for Greg on the station. So that means it only took them a day to get there. It sounds like there is some relativistic distortion in time, but it's not that much. It's not years between uh, stops compared to uh, what would actually happen if you traveled those speeds. Yes. Also, the zoo was very interesting. I was expecting a bit more of a prison than an actual environmental enclosure. Well, it sounds like they were trying to preserve the humans. This may be like a newer, based on when it was being constructed and stuff like that, this may be a newer version of the prison because it sounds like they may have had other versions of the prison, I should say zoo, where they were all kept in cells and stuff like that, and they were dying because humans don't survive well in captivity until you figure out what they need. Yeah, and, you know, they make a good point there that, you know, when you don't know anything different, you don't see anything wrong with what you have. The inhabitants of the zoo were quite happy because it was all they had ever known. All of their physical needs were taken care of. They were told exactly what to do, what to think. They had plenty of food. The atmospheric control kept them comfortable. There was no illness. As Greg said, there's always a catch to these utopias. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> that would be the Jews' name. It's like, yeah, we'll pass on the arranged marriage. Thank you. <laughs> Though it also makes sense for if you're trying to keep the population alive. If you notice the animation style of the inhabitants opposed to everyone that's been drawn on Earth, they all had a little bit of a sameness to them. So if you think about it, you have an isolated population. Mm -hmm. That's probably also why there's so few of them, because they may have been slowly dying off over time because of genetic problems. Because it sounds like it's been around for several thousand years. Yes, because Blue Diamond was maintaining it after Pink Diamond was shattered. Mm -hmm. So we know that it's been around for longer than the amount of time since Blue Diamond was destroyed. So the genetic pool in there is probably actually pretty shallow by now. Yes, because there hadn't been any new inhabitants in forever, so there hadn't been any change in the genetic makeup. And that probably explains why Greg was chosen right off the bat, because the system probably knows that his genetics are completely different than everyone else's, and it wants to maintain the very genes. And that also explains why it picked, I'm not being biased or color or anything like this, that's why it's picked a white man and a black woman as a pairing because those genes are very varied. Yeah, so the system that assigns them at the choose name is probably specifically looking at genetic variances. Mm -hmm. It was also interesting that the inhabitants knew to keep Stephen out of the circle, that they knew he was too young. Mm -hmm. Which means they probably had children before because they also had older people in the group as well if you looked. Yeah, well, with this whole choosing thing, I'm pretty sure that these people were the descendants of the original prisoners, so they are familiar with children. Just at this time frame, there weren't any children in the group. Mm -hmm. And I'm surprised they still spoke English. Well, you would think there would be more variants, but also children's show and also the gyms speak English. You know, the typical children's show thing of Universal Translator. Even though um, they all speak English, it's kind of interesting how Holly Blue Agate was like, I don't understand these humans at all. Yeah, so the question is, did she actually not understand them or did she refuse to acknowledge that they were capable of intelligent speech because they're in a zoo and therefore essentially mm. animals? Especially since all the amethysts, or what's their actual name? Because amethyst is slightly different than the others. But um, all the amethysts... No, they were actually amethysts. Okay. They actually understood Greg and Stephen and everyone else just fine. Yeah, so I think it's more of Holly Blue Agate trying to be poised and above and not acknowledging someone that she considers beneath her. Mm -hmm. So it's more of that Jim's looking down on humans that we traditionally see. Because if you think about it, Blue Diamond had no trouble understanding Greg. Mm -hmm. They were able to have a full conversation, a very poignant conversation. Mm-hmm. Ah, other things in that episode, like that whole thing with Pearl going to Hollywood Agate and going, you just shut up. <laughs> I also like how the fusion happens and all the amethysts go, yes! <laughs> <laughs> but Hollywood Agate goes, no! <laughs> 
Yes, well, from what we've seen of Homeworld, they do not approve of cross-gem fusions. Mm -hmm. And all those Earth Amethyst and the occasional Jasper seem to be, you know, a pretty cool group. Probably because Holly Blue has looked down on them so much that they have that fraternity. And knowing that the Crystal Gem Amethyst was actually one of them. Because they were able to identify, oh, you came out of that hole. They're like, took you long enough. Welcome. Hi. Hey, what's going on? Yep. Oh, those are your friends? Okay, yeah, cool. We'll help you out. Because why would they help Holly Blue? Because Holly Blue does nothing but be mean to them. I like the, yeah, and she's still celebrating because she's no longer the shortest one. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Uh, I also love the, yeah, we need to hurt each other. Punch me, Dad. I can't punch you. Okay, I guess I'll take the hint. Tap. I can take it. Whack. <laughs> also, it didn't work. Should I try again? No, there won't be anything left to rescue. <laughs> I was like, watch out for the brat. <laughs> <laughs> Little too late. Yeah. And you have to wonder what else is going to happen at that zoo now that the humans have been introduced to the idea of choice. Are they going to start rebelling? Because up until Greg and Steven came, they were happy. So technically... Did they need rescuing? Because the Crystal Gems didn't try to take any of the other humans. Mm -hmm. Only Greg and Steven. Though, speaking of that, uh, Sapphire accidentally introduced the idea of gathering more humans. Yes. And you brought the point that that may start happening in the next couple episodes. Yes, because it gave an opening and that gives more reasons for Homeworld Gems to come to Earth. Because the cluster hasn't activated yet. And it probably won't activate. Yes, but the homeworld gems don't know that. Mm -hmm. Or it won't activate in the way they think it will. Yes, it's not going to activate as the super weapon that Yellow Diamond wants. Because those shards, you know, thanks to their interaction with Steven, now have a different mindset. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to want to destroy the Earth. And they may even help against the homeworld gems. But since the cluster hasn't activated, there's still a window of time for the diamonds to take more humans. So I think we're going to see an increase in attempted human abductions because that was something, you know, Yellow Diamond's trying to get Blue Diamond out of this funk. It's like, okay, you want to preserve something of our legacy. Okay, let's go take care of this while there's still a window of opportunity. Because Blue Diamond is really holding on to the past. I mean, she didn't destroy any of those rose quartz gems yeah. because pink diamond had made them. And I think that kind of blows a hole in some people's theory that rose was actually a fusion because those gems are the exact same cut as the gem Steven has and what's shown on rose quartz and all the flashbacks. Mm -hmm. Though speaking of theories, some people have a theory that the pink haired girl from the episode last one out of beach city the one that Pearl is attracted to? Some people have a theory that that's actually a gem and not a real human. Which could be possible, and that could help explain Pearl's intense reaction. But that was an awesome episode. <laughs> yes, it was. It, it actually parodied the classic coming-of-age 80s movies, especially with the way the credits were at the end. Yes, I love that Steven was the voice, voice of, of reason. reason. <laughs> but that was so awesome, and that's a good theory, though, because that would help explain why... That pink-haired woman gave Pearl her phone number so quickly. And it's like, wow, you had like a two-minute conversation. You got a phone number. Mm-hmm. That, that, that is power. Though the way the conversation go to a normal human would sound all spiritual and everything. Especially the way Pearl ended it. Oh, I just saved your world. Did this and did that and do that. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> but if the pink-haired woman is actually a gem, she'd go, oh, you were one of those. Awesome. Mm -hmm. She just gave me this code. You got her phone number! The only thing I'm worried about is I think the fact that they use Greg's car in the getaway may come back to bite Greg in the tail because I'm pretty sure the cop would have some way recorded the license plate number. Very likely, but hopefully Greg still has some of the funds from his jingle and he can just pay off those fines. I'm pretty sure he still has... Plenty, even though he's bought a, I don't know if it's a Rolex or not, but that's probably what they were hinting at. He's also got a mini disc player for his van. So that's only a, I think that's only a couple of thousand compared to what he still has left. Yeah. 
And the watch he got probably wasn't that bad either. It's probably only another couple of thousand. I know a couple of thousand sounds like a lot, but Greg had a lot. <laughs> yes, so we're talking out of Greg's funds, not out of our empty pocketbooks. Mm-hmm. With moths fluttering around in them. <laughs> Another thing we need to touch on in fourth wall breaking was when Greg and Steven went to Korea and we saw the animators working on Steven Universe. <laughs> yes, that was a good one. When I first caught that, I was actually paused the episode like, they're actually drawing Greg. <laughs> that was really interesting about that. If you if you pause the scene he's looking at, he notices himself being drawn. I'm like... <laughs> yeah, it's like, wow, that's really meta. And now I feel I should, like, look and see if the animation team that does the show is in Korea. Because a lot of shows are animated overseas. Mm-hmm. Voltron being one. Korra. Avatar. The mm -hmm. Last Airbender. All of which were animated in another country. Probably Korea. They do a great job. Is there anything else you wanted to touch on? <laughs> or nitpicks? Or theories? Or... <laughs> <laughs> uh... Well, going back to the mindfulness episode, it was nice that Connie got her act together, but then it was Steven who was losing it, because Connie did one thing on accident. Steven deliberately harmed others, even though it was in self-defense. There's a difference in the mentality between accidental and intentional. Also, they need to do something about those rubies floating around in space. Well... If we follow the train of thought, they probably got them on the way back. So they probably either bubbled them or something. Assuming they could find them again because they just, you know, bumped into the windshield. What is the radius that those rubies are floating around in? And also interesting that while there seem to be multiple rubies out there in space, it was only the one that Stephen personally excluded from his bubble that was haunting his um, fusion vision. Mm -hmm. Well, it's because it's the one he personally kicked out and did damage to and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Even though he initially healed that ruby. Mm -hmm. Also, we need to touch on the Zoltron, you oh. know, fortune-telling boy from the future episode. That was great. When I first watched it, I was like, we're going to get Garnet in here somewhere. Yeah, because I'm like, hmm, future fortune-telling. Yeah, Garnet needs to be in here. Also, I love how no one recognized Steven. Yeah, it's like, really? Come on. It's Steven. Mm hmm And I love how the first fortune he tells is to those two, and you're like... <laughs> yeah, and through his actions, he actually gets them to go to work, because they're like, that was creepy. You know what? Let's go to work. Yeah, let's go to work. <laughs> Where it's safe and normal. You're both right. You both deserve your own rooms. And the father shakes his head in the background. Yes. So, very interesting. And usually when there's an episode like that where people are doing fortune telling or making decisions and doing arbitration for others when they aren't necessarily qualified, it usually comes back to bite them a bit more. Yeah, but I think Stephen is actually pretty qualified for that because he's doing it all the time for the gems and other people. And he's shown over time that he has good judgment most of the time. Mm -hmm. So it was interesting that that wasn't the issue with the fortune telling. Mm -hmm. The issue was when, I don't know what to tell this person. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to help them and I want to help them because they seem so sad. And it's because of their sad outlook that he couldn't help them because they have a sad outlook on life. No matter what you tell them, they're always going to picture it through a sad lens. Everything's always going to be wrong for them no matter what. So you have to figure out some way to change their point of view first before you can make them happy. Mm -hmm. And it was great that he got Mr. Smiley to go after Mr. Frowny, and I think it would have been nice. I know he probably already paid for the bus ticket, but if when the bus pulled away, Mr. Frowny had still been there, even though they did manage to reconnect. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll see him in the future. Okay, I didn't mean to say it that way, but that works. <laughs> yes. And also Mr. Smiley saying that Stephen's debt was not repaid. Okay, yes, that was an expensive machine, but it was also really old and it was falling apart anyways. I'm pretty sure that bag of quarters paid off Stephen's debt. Because if you depreciate the value of the machine over time and the fact that it's been in storage, it's a fully depreciated item. Says the accountant. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the way he said how old it was, okay, that's 
because he wasn't when he went to plug it in he wasn't even sure it was still going to work mm -hmm. and to get technical for a moment under makers it would have been fully depreciated within just a couple of years which is your tax one but just even on standard depreciation which is split out evenly over the lifespan if he's not sure it's going to work anymore the lifespan is over the item's fully depreciated he's taken all the expenses for it and that was your accountant's lesson for the day <laughs> so yeah but mr smiley is a cheat <laughs> yes and if he can keep Steven working and getting a bag of quarters like that every day, he's obviously going to go for it. Mm hmm But the real question is, is how long will that actually work? How long will people keep coming back to Steven for answers like that? Depends on how addicted they get. Remember Katara in the mm -hmm. fortune teller episode from Avatar The Last Airbender? <laughs> but I hate whatever fruit that was. Then have the mango! <laughs> yeah, of getting so dependent that can no longer make independent decisions. Mm-hmm. I always forget how strong of a bender Aang is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh but back to Steven Universe. Yeah, and, you know, another slightly creepy slash dark thing. Going back to the family episode with Uncle Andy, when Steven makes that living pumpkin and then does that carving right in front of him, and doesn't even think about it and understand why the pumpkin dog is freaked out. Like, dude, from that pumpkin dog's POV, you just murdered and mutilated that pumpkin. Of course it's freaked out! Oh, he. I think he figures that out right at the end when he looks at himself and goes, oh. But he's okay with the result because the pumpkin dog is now with... Peridot and Lapis, which is what he wanted, but he didn't try to deliberately scare it. He was trying to make Peridot and Lapis feel better. Yeah, but... I'm thinking he realized he scared it afterwards, but then he was okay with the result because it got the result he wanted, even mm -hmm. though it wasn't the thing he wanted to do. Yeah, but that goes back to being aware of your situation. You have, you were trying to make Lapis and Peridot feel better, but you weren't taking into account everyone who was in the area. Mm -hmm. So because you were not being mindful of everyone who was present, collateral damage. Hmm. So... What are your final thoughts on these episodes of season four? Very enjoyable. Nice to get both more world building and uh, flashbacks with the past. Some great fourth wall breaking and internal references. And I love how subtle they are with their world building because it seems like every episode has a little bit of world building in it. Some have more than others, like the buddy book mm -hmm. one, but... Every episode seems to have some type of world building in it, even if it's not with Steven. It's with people around him, like Smiley and Frowny. That's still world building right there. We get the past of Mr. Smiley and more of the world and there were a comedy act and stuff like that. Yeah, and, you know, flashbacks to when Steven was a baby and the difference in the interactions between Greg and the Crystal Gems early compared to later. Because, I mean, we've already seen that Pearl was kind of the last holdout, but we didn't know how much Garnet and Amethyst held out. You know, when we got the episode a while back where Amethyst and Greg were watching that Tiny Butler series together again, we got to know that they were more friendly at one point. Mm -hmm. So Amethyst was probably the most accepting. And... Garnet became accepting over time, and Pearl was kind of the last holdout. Mm -hmm. And I love how Steven seems to be one who's healing all of these wounds, as it were, between the gems and Greg. Yeah, well, he's kind of the connecting force. He's the reason that they have interaction with each other. Mm -hmm. And he seems to do that a lot with not just the gems he knows, but the gems he meets. He hasn't been able to help Jasper yet because he hasn't found out what Jasper needs. To be able to be healed, other than, I'm talking about before she was corrupted. Mm -hmm. He has to find out what problem Jasper really has. Because there's that whole thing with Jasper and how the, all the problems she was having and how she was having this pressure put on her because she was the only good one to come out of Earth where all these other bad gems came out of it. Yeah, which is really sad. You colonize Earth because you think it's going to be good place to create gems and how were you that incorrect i think if you go back to 
paradox comparing the kindergartens. The beta kindergarten that Amethyst came from was higher quality than the more deserty kindergarten where Jasper came from. So mm -hmm. Jasper was the real exception in coming out amazing from a poor quality kindergarten. And then you have Amethyst, who they all consider overbaked, overcooked, you know, an imperfection coming from this much better kindergarten. Well, I can't wait to see the next couple episodes and whenever we do the next recording. So, yeah, my final thoughts are awesome episodes, lots of nice backstory. Very well done, as usual. I love Steven Universe. <laughs> and I hope you've enjoyed listening to our thoughts on Steven Universe, Season 4, Episodes 2 through 15. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this, please subscribe, check out other videos, and share with your friends. If you enjoy Lex's art, you can find more of it on DeviantArt, Tumblr, and Twitter. If you'd like to support this channel financially, please check out Coffee and Patreon. You can also check Lux's commission page for commission availability.